I'm reading The Other Side by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. That summer, the fence that stretched through our town seemed bigger. We lived in a yellow house on one side of it. White people lived on the other. And Mama said, don't climb over that fence when you play. She said it wasn't safe. That summer, there was a girl who wore a pink sweater. Each morning, she climbed up on the fence and stared over at our side. Sometimes I stared back. She never sat on that fence with anybody. That girl didn't. Once when we were jumping rope, she asked if she could play. And my friend Sandra said no, without even asking the rest of us. I don't know what I would have said. Maybe yes, maybe no. That summer, everyone and everything on the other side of that fence seemed far away. When I asked my mama why, she said, because that's the way things have always been. Sometimes when me and mama went into town, I saw that girl with her mama. She looked sad sometimes, that girl did. Don't stare, my mama said. It's not polite. It rained a lot that summer. On rainy days, that girl sat on the fence in a raincoat. She let herself get all wet and acted like she didn't even care. Sometimes I saw her dancing around in puddles, splashing and laughing. Mama wouldn't let me go out in the rain. That's why I bought you rainy day toys, my mama said. You stay inside here where it's warm and safe and dry. But every time it rained, I looked for that girl. And I always found her somewhere near the fence. Someplace in the middle of summer, the rain stopped. When I walked outside, the grass was damp and the sun was already high up in the sky. And I stood there, my hands up in the air. I felt brave that day. I felt free. I got close to the fence and that girl asked me my name. Clover, I said. My name's Annie, she said, Annie Paul. I live over yonder, she said, by where you see the laundry. That's my blouse hanging on the line. She smiled then. She had a pretty smile. And then I smiled. And we stood there, looking at each other, smiling. It's nice up on this fence, Annie said. You can see all over. I ran my hand along the fence. I reached up and touched the top of it. A fence like this was made for sitting on, Annie said. She looked at me sideways. My mama says I shouldn't go on the other side, I said. My mama says the same thing, but she never said nothing about sitting on it. Neither did mine, I said. That summer, me and Annie sat together on that fence. And when Sandra and them looked at me funny, I just made believe I didn't care. Some mornings, my mama watched us. I waited for her to tell me to get down from that fence before I break my neck or something, but she never did. I see you made a new friend, she said one morning. And I nodded, and mama smiled. That summer, me and Annie sat on that fence and watched the whole wide world around us. One day, Sandra and them were jumping, rope near the fence, and we asked if we could play. I don't care, Sandra said. And when we jumped, Sandra and me were partners, the way we used to be. When we were too tired to jump anymore, we sat up on the fence, all of us, in a long line. Someday, somebody's going to come along and knock down this old fence, Annie said. And I nodded. Yeah, I said. Someday. And 
that is the end of this story, The Other Side, written by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Here is the author's note. Years ago, when I began to tell the story of Clover and Annie, I had no idea about the life this book would take on. I knew two things. One, that I wanted this to be a story about the way in which young people change the world each day through their seemingly simple acts of resistance. And two, that I wanted it to be a lyrical story that brought with the telling hope. I needed that hope. By the time I sat down and began to tell this story, I traveled all over the country and to many places outside the country as well. As I began to really see the world, I realized that so much of it is still se segregated despite the work of Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. Always I would say, what about right here in this classroom? And slowly, the young people would begin to look around and notice, perhaps for the first time, that there is still work to do. People often ask me if I think the fence is down. Down? No. Lower? Definitely. In the years since The Other Side was published, the world has changed. Our country elected its first president of color. This was hard to imagine even 10 years ago, but we imagined it. And it happened, just as Clover and Annie imagined a fenceless world. Each time I pick up The Other Side and begin reading it to young people, I see in their faces their own eagerness to knock down the fences in their lives. And I'm filled with such an amazing sense of hope and pride. Who knows what their worlds will be like when the other side turns 20, 30, 50. Imagine.